Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Triple N Media. I am Dr. Nick Nickham from Houston, Texas. This is a series of cardiology lectures. Today the topic of focus is uh, GRACE score. GRACE score is used in risk stratification of acute coronary syndrome patients. So we are going to take a deep look into GRACE score, how it is uh, calculated, what are the points taken into consideration, how do you score them, and how do you stratify the patients based on their score. So let us begin. The GRACE stands for Global Registry of Acute Coronary Events. The study was uh, done to come up with a scoring system to risk stratify patients with a diagnosis of uh, acute coronary syndrome, be it STEMI, NSTEMI, or unstable angina pectoris, to determine their in hospital six months and three year mortality based on their initial clinical presentation. The GRACE score involved eight variables such as age, history, RALS, heart rate, systolic blood pressure, STT changes, serum creatinine, and in GRACE 2, they substituted Clips classification of uh, heart failure with diuretic usage and serum creatinine with a history of uh, renal dysfunction. So those are the two main differences in GRACE 2 compared with the GRACE 1 score. So we're going to be focusing on GRACE 1 score system to do the risk assessment. This uh, GRACE study involved 92 hospitals in 14 countries. The study start, was started in 2004. It had 54, 76 uh, STEMI patients. There were 5,209 patients with the NSTEMI and 6,149 patients were having unstable angina pectoris. If you look at the six month mortality, we see some interesting observations here. The STEMI patients had a mortality of 4.8%, whereas the NSTEMI patients had a much higher mortality of 6.2, which is almost twice the mortality of uh, unstable angina pectoris and much higher than patients with the STEMI. That explains the importance of following these patients with acute coronary syndromes, be STEMI, NSTEMI, or unstable angina pectoris on an ongoing basis. Watch for their symptoms, look for reversible ischemia, and try to further stratify them to interventions or medical treatment. As a matter of fact, they followed these patients and they recognized there was a 20% across the board rehospitalization of these patients. It didn't differ whether they had STEMI, NSTEMI, or unstable angina pectoris. Similarly, 15% of them needed revascularization, including those who had STEMI presentations. Of course, when you have a patient with a STEMI presentation, you fix the culprit lesion, you bring them back and look for reversible ischemia, and then you address that one. But what was more surprising was a 20% admission rates for all these three different groups. And particularly with the NSTEMI groups, it becomes more important because first of all, we don't know their coronary anatomy unless they had a cardiac catheterization. A lot of them may not get uh, like uh, provocative pharmacological stress test to see if they have reversible ischemia. And many of these patients may have unstable plaques, which we may not be able to detect uh, during the initial admission. So based on these studies, uh, it emphasizes the fact these patients need to be followed, need to watch for their symptoms, further risk stratify based on the presence or absence of uh, reversible ischemia and based on other parameters like left ventricular function. All these different points, I'm not going to go in detail. You can just pause the video and look at. For example, age, if it's less than 40, there's zero point. It's between 60 and 69, there were 55 points, and 
80 and 89, 91 points. So these points go up dramatically with age, which is consistent with the higher risk of uh, cardiovascular morbidity and mortality among those who are greater than age 60. Similarly, patients with heart failure do worse compared to people without heart failure and people who had previous myocardial infarctions also have an increased risk. Looking at the heart rate, people who had a heart rate of less than 50, it was zero point, whereas if the heart rate was between 70 and 90, it accounted for nine points, but if the heart rate went up to 150 to 200, the points were 35. And interestingly, the systolic blood pressure, uh, as you can see, is highest risk is among people who come with a systolic blood pressure of less than 80 millimeters of mercury, which explains these patients may be in cardiogenic shock. They may have significant left ventricular dysfunction. They may be hypovolemic and any number of reasons that their blood pressure can be low. But as the blood pressure improves, these numbers get better. And surprisingly, those with the hypertension did not have any additional risk factor as far as their cardiovascular outcomes in the hospital at six months or three year intervals. ST segment depression was seen in some patients, which accounted for 11 points. Similarly, elevated cardiac enzymes accounted for 15 points and if they had no PCI in the hospital, it increased the number of points. This is about creatinine, and you can just look at it. If they had a normal creatinine like 1.2, the risk was five. However, it triples if their creatinine goes from two to four milligram per deciliter. And this has been tested in more than 20,000 patients across multiple databases and has been found to be extremely reliable and validated. Based on these points, when a patient comes, we enter their data either in an app or on a website and it will automatically give the number of points and the estimated risk. So if the score is between 0 to 69, the mortality is less than 1%. The STEMI patients fall anywhere between 91 to 130 points, ranging from 3 to 5.9% mortality. Your acute coronary syndromes fall between 130 and 150, with 6 to 11% mortality, and the points go up with increased risk points. Okay, let us do a field test now and see how it uh, really applies in the real world. Let us take a 70 year old person here. This is from MetCalc website. You can look through the address and look at it. Let's put a heart rate is and let's put a systolic blood pressure of 80, creatinine of 2.1 and cardiac arrest, no, ST segment, yes, abnormal enzymes, yes, Rouse and Jigra have been special. And when you see this patient who is almost like a cardiogenic shock patient with a blood pressure of 80, the mortality is 30% with a total composite score, grace score of 166. Let us contrast that with a younger person who is 40 years old with a pulse rate of 70 and a blood pressure of 128, creatinine of 1.0, and no heart failure. Of course, ST segment changes, abnormal enzymes. The mortality drops to 1.6% with the 71 points. Let's take an unstable angina pectoris in the age of 60. His pulse rate is like 90. His systolic blood pressure is like 110. And the creatinine of 1.6 and we we'll leave all this rest of the numbers and it falls at uh, a mortality of 8% with uh, 122 points. So this is how you use the GRACE scale based on the initial presentation to determine what their risks are in, in hospital six months down the line and three years later. So taking this information, we can strategize these patients, but I would not stop there. As the GRACE study showed, 20% of them have rehospitalizations and 15% of them end up getting revascularization. Hence, it is important to follow all of these patients frequently, look for new symptoms, 
look for reversible ischemia and further strategize these patients to medical treatment or further interventions and hopefully that will reduce the mortality and improve the long-term prognosis thank you so much i am dr nick nickham if you would like to get a copy a free copy of uh, how to master cardiology rounds uh, just send us an email and we'll be happy to send you that copy and if there's any way we can improve the presentations and also the the cardiology manual please let us know and we will see you next time thank you so much for your time